Whatever happens, don't look down. You keep telling yourself like a mantra. Your friend is laughing out loud at a cat video, and you can't resist the temptation. Just one look at the screen, and you ask to stop the vehicle. An old travel companion of yours is back. Its name is motion sickness. It has been there for centuries. The famous Greek physician Hippocrates described the way sailing on the sea affects the body over 2,000 years ago. The number of environments where you can experience this unpleasant condition has grown since Hippocrates' times. You can now get motion sick in cars, tilting trains, funfair rides, aircraft, weightlessness in outer space, and even virtual reality and simulators. But the real cause for this sensation is still a mystery. When you're inside a car that's cruising down the road, see the inside of the car as steady as a rock. But the vestibular system in your inner ear is feeling the movement. That's why even if you are traveling in a pitch dark setting, your body still knows you're on the move. And that's why your senses start playing tug of war over whether you're chilling or zooming. Your vestibular system consists of three semicircular tubules and each is responsible for its type of movement, up down, side to side, and front back. There are also two hairline sacs filled with fluid. When you move, the fluid sloshes around, tickling those hairs and sending messages to your brain about how you're grooving. This system helps you sense your body's orientation, speed, and angles. But if your eyes start telling stories that don't match the ear's wild tales, that's when the tummy turbulence begins. And it's not just about moving vehicles. Even watching a movie, especially one of those cool 3D ones, can be a culprit in this dizzy drama. Imagine the camera on screen going all wild and swoopy while you're comfortably seated. Your eyes feel like you're flying and your ears are sending the opposite signals. And that's when the queasiness creeps in. There's another related theory explaining why it happens to some people. It has to do with controlling posture. It says that you get motion sick not just because your sensory information gets out of sync, but because you can't adjust your posture to reduce that mismatch. It does make sense because you often can't get up and straighten your spine when in a vehicle, but there isn't enough evidence to support this idea. For some people, it all ends in feeling uncomfortable, and others have to get it all out. And here comes another motion sickness mystery. Since it has to do with your eyes and ears, how does the tummy jump into the equation? One theory is that our bodies are playing an evolutionary game here. Fast vehicles are a relatively new concept on the evolutionary timeline. Our ancient bodies never signed up for this sensory roller coaster, and they're still figuring out how to deal with it. They remember the best way to deal with something poisonous is to throw it out. Back in our evolutionary past, feeling disoriented by eating poisonous stuff called for a purge response. That disoriented feeling is pretty close to the motion sickness vibe. So, when your brain gets confused by motion, your body decides it's time to go back to the good old days of purging out poison. So, it hits us all differently, and there's no single reason why some people are more prone to it than others. It has to do with your overall health and the presence of certain conditions. They might affect how well your vision and balance systems work as a team. It's also common that the younger generations reach for the paper bag more often than their parents. The type of ride you're on plays a big role in how much motion sickness you'll feel. The longer you're exposed to a bumpy ride and the bigger the range of movement, the more severe the symptoms are going to be. If you're on a small boat during a storm for longer than eight hours, get ready for a whole symphony of queasy symptoms. But if you need to travel by train and it's just under an hour or so, even the loose tracks shouldn't turn your trip into a stomach roller coaster. Your role during the ride also affects how you're going to feel. Lots of folks feel the motion sickness blues when they're a passenger, but not when they're behind the wheel. There's a theory that says it's all about how much control over the situation you have. As a driver, you're informed of every twist and turn on the road in advance, and you choose how fast or how slow you'll cover them. You always know when you're about to push the brake, and the car will stop abruptly. Passengers are like backup dancers who don't know the moves. They react after every twist and turn, 
making the motion sickness party even wilder. That's why one easy fix here is to always take the driver's seat if you know your body isn't keen on bumpy roads. If that's impossible, your second best option is the seat right next to the driver. This way, you can stare at the road ahead of you and see which twists and turns to expect next. Try to stick your eyes to the horizon. It's your safe line. Even when you go over bumps, the car will move up and down the same as your vision. There shouldn't be a conflict between the two senses, and you should be fine. If you're traveling by sea, choose the midpoint on a boat. Unless it's absolutely necessary, try to avoid traveling by a speedboat and opt for something larger and more stable instead. On a cruise ship, book a cabin in the front or the middle, closest to the water level. When choosing a plane seat, go for the window one over the wing. It's the most stable section of the plane, and even if the flight gets bumpy, you'll feel the least of it. If you're getting to your destination by train, always pick a seat facing forward, ideally by the window. This way, you'll be able to stare at the horizon all you want. Make sure you get enough air and water. If you aren't feeling well, try lying down, shutting your eyes, and getting some sleep whenever it's possible. Control your diet before and during the trip. Heavy, spicy foods, those with strong odors and rich in fat can make you feel much worse. Plus, avoid all foods and drinks that normally don't agree with you or make you feel unusually full. Instead, get some ginger, just a tiny pinch of encapsulated ginger root powder one hour before travel, and again, every two to four hours during the trip can help you feel better. It's easier said than done, but don't think about getting motion sick as you get on a trip Research has shown that it can be one of the reasons you actually will get sick. For the same reason, try to avoid the company of people who talk about getting motion sickness or describe the bumpy feelings in their tummies. Try to immediately focus on some other activity to keep your brain busy. It can't be reading or watching funny cat videos in a moving car, but it can be thinking about your future destination and things you're going to do there. Tell yourself you won't get sick this time. Verbal placebos have proved themselves effective in some cases. Any VR fans out there? If you're experiencing the modern type of motion sickness called cyber sickness, try to reduce the lengths of your VR sessions. Your body should adjust to your new reality eventually, but it takes some time and training. Try to choose the games where you don't need to move around a lot, but teleport to the next location. A headset with the right distance between lenses will also help. You will only need to move your eyes around as little as possible, and you should feel better in VR land. Finally, make sure you breathe properly and the room you're playing in has enough air. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.